Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we are gonna look at picture engraving and the XCS software. We, I've already made a video on picture engraving in the past where we used ImageR and LaserGRBL combined. However, it was a bit limited since ImageR only has a few uploads a day for free and then you need to pay for their subscription. And, laser, and the resolution of my old engraver was not the best. But since I now got an x D1 and I can use the XCS software, I thought why not use that piece of software if you already got it and see how this one works. So without further ado, let's get right in. So here we are in the Xtool Creative Space software. First of all, we need to run a material test on everything we plan to engrave. It just saves you a lot of hassle and a lot of failed prints. So for this, I like to draw a rectangle. I'm gonna set it to five by five millimeter. Here you undock the ratio. Set it to five by five millimeter. Then you choose the operation you want to do, scoring, uh, engraving or cutting. We want to do an engraving material test. And then you go right here and open a material test. So now there are uh, a lot of settings to do. You can choose the power from 10 to 100%. Now, depending on what you want to do, you want to change that. If we do slide engraving, I think we can go throughout the whole spectrum and see what it brings us. If you do other stuff like steel engraving, you like 10% power won't cut it. Yeah, You will probably need to start off at higher power levels, like 60% for a 10 watt laser, and then continue. Then we go on to the speed setting. For this, again, we can go throughout the whole spectrum, I think. 10 millimeters per second is pretty slow for engraving, so I think I'm gonna cut it down to 40 millimeters per second for the test and maximum speed 180 is pretty pretty fast so 120 i think from what i've uh, gathered is a pretty good maximum speed and then you create it and you can burn it into your workpiece and see what the results are so here are the results of a few material tests that are done with slate engraving here are my optimal setting on the d1 with a 10 watt laser uh, the best results were made with about 93 millimeters per second and about half power maybe even a bit less it really it doesn't need that much power and then on these aluminium business cards you can see why it is so important to run a speed test because the 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 different power settings are completely different from each other these are 0 0.8 millimeter anodized business cards and they need a lot of speed and a lot of power like uh, this is 78 and 90 percent power at 100 120 millimeters per second and this is the optimal speed with these ones yeah it actually it starts to burn you can see on the top right corner where it's blackened actually for these you want less power and especially less speed like high speed completely ruins the engraving quality here it is nice and silver and here it is nice and black. This is why material tests are important. There is one of with wood where you can see how deep it engraves. That blows basically all the way through and here it does nothing. Now that we found the perfect settings, we can go on to the engraving. For this, we're just going to import our picture real quickly. Set it to the correct size that we want because that it will be apparent later. Well, we want to do that first and then we can start with the image processing. Now you can see I've already removed all of the background. This is very important for picture engraving to, because it just gives you a lot more detail. There isn't a whole lot of contrast in your image and if, if let's say this picture was taken in a field of grass for example, you won't be able to tell the dog from the rest because it will all basically look the same in the end. For this, you, XCS has a function, but I don't really like to use it. It is very, very cumbersome and doesn't really work that well. So, as I said in the last video I did on picture engraving, look at your phone. Most modern phones have some sort of AI image cutout feature. 
there is one in the browser matters segment anything if you don't mind giving them all your data or else if you have something like photoshop then obviously that's perfect after we've removed the background we can start with the image processing for this we need to think a little bit first i'm gonna pull this one down so that it will turn the picture into a black and white image now if you are engraving on something like wood for example where the engraving like the laser dot is black then you can leave it as it is right here because everything that is dark here will be dark in the finished engraving if you do something like slate or aluminium business cards where the laser dot produces white color then we need to invert the image because now everything that is black here will be black in the final image okay then next we have a whole bunch of settings here but first of all we need to dial in our settings first we can just do that so that we, that we won't forget i'm gonna use 78 percent power on my 10 watt laser and 93 millimeters per second that's what i found to be looks best in person and then most importantly the bitmap mode i am going to link you down below an article from xtool themselves where they explain what these different bitmap modes do I found that the Sierra mode looks very nice on Slate and that's what I'm gonna use. Then dial in the resolution, 120 lines per centimeter for my x d one That's where the laser dot at 0.08 millimeters will basically repeat pretty much perfectly. 125 would be the best, but it's that's not that important. And then we can continue and look at the preview. This is where you will get your preview on how the processed image looks like. You won't, if you, you can see, if I change these settings right here, it won't change anything. You will just see it in the preview. Let's select Jarvis and see how it looks like right here. Now it looks a bit different. We can use the Stucky. It again looks a bit different, but I'm going to use the Sierra one. As I already used it before and it gave me very nice results. Now I have to say the pro processed image looks actually pretty good to me. Parts like this which are very very dark probably will, will be very very bright. So if the whole image would look like this for example, let's say it was all a bit darker and I'm gonna continue now then you can see the whole image is way too dark, there won't be any detail in any of this. So you actually want it to look like it is right here and this is pretty much perfect. The settings you can play with, the, here you can compress the image, you can reduce this and it's basically gonna drop down. So what this is here is black on this scale if i remember correctly and here is like dark gray here is lighter gray and here is white if i pull this slider down it's going to compress the image so that means that anything that is above this darkness value so black and very dark grays will basically look the same in the final image and you can use these settings if you have very bright spots or very very dark spots in your image can compress it down so that you can kind of make make it work a little bit this is something where you just need to play with it go into the preview see how it looks like and and then contrast works kind of similar to processing but uh, to the compression but it produces these artifacts around the side so you just want to compress it if you use this enough so that you won't get this you know this cast on the side here I don't really need it. I think I'm just gonna brighten it up very, very slightly. And this should be good for engraving. You can see we lost a little bit of detail here. So maybe just turn it down and maybe just leave how it came out. And I think I'm gonna uh, try engrave this and see how it turns out. And here we've got the result of our first picture engraving. 
And this, in my opinion, looks very, very nice. This is a bit hard to show on camera if it would focus, but there is a lot of detail in the picture. I can basically make out all the little details on this. Now for engraving, what you can also try to change the look is you can use a ground slate. Now this has the original texture. If you grind this down so that it's completely smooth, it will give you a bit better of access view. You can see it changes a bit depending on the light, but in person it looks very, very nice. And I can, yeah, I can make out all the details on her. If I would change something, I would maybe, you know, brighten it up a little, little bit so that I can get more details in these parts. But yeah, it doesn't matter that much. It looks really, really good. And it has a very, very high resolution compared to the other Sculpfan laser I got. So that was already it for this video. Again, I'm really happy with the results that we've got here. The engraving resolution is very, very nice. I think I had a bit of trouble uh, capturing it in the camera because I have really bad lighting now. I don't have really nice studio lights and it's completely cloudy outside, but it, it looks a lot better than on the other one. And if I would do this again, I would obviously increase the size so that it fills out the slate piece completely and then it would look really really good. The image processing in their software is very nice. Just all of the hassle with the image R software is gone where you need to make sure you keep the tab open so you don't lose your uploads and it is a bit more work. Image R, the auto processing on their software is very very good. You have to give it to them. It is paid software but it works very well on all sorts of different uh, surfaces. However, the Excel software is for free and also works very nice and gives you a very good resolution. After a bit of trial and error with your particular laser and your workpiece, you will have figured it out. And then you can get very nice photo engravings completely for free without external software. That was it for this video. I hope you liked it. If it if it helped you and you learned something, then consider subscribing and giving the video a like. Then I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.